Welcome to Calling the Tune, a new Phi Compass podcast series on financial instruments under the new Common Provisions Regulation. My name is Anna Zurek, and I am part of the Phi Compass team at the European Investment Bank. Our recovery plan will help us turn the challenge of the pandemic into an opportunity for a recovery led by a green and digital transition. The words of the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, are a good summary of why we are all in the business of shared management financial instruments. In this final episode of the podcast, I am joined by Oana Dordan and Jeva Zalite from DG Regio European Commission to discuss the payment, publicity, reporting and auditing requirements for financial instruments under the new CPR. Oana, Jeva, welcome back. Thank you, Anna. Hello, everybody. We are very happy to be here, Anna. Jeva, the new CPR sets out the procedure for submitting payment applications in relation to financial instruments. Could you take us through those procedures? What is new? In fact, we changed the rules completely. The purpose of this changed rules is to simplify the payment application process and to align it with the actual implementation on the ground. So if we look at the current arrangements in the current programming period, instead of a number of tranches uh, that uh, the current rules envisage, for the future, there will be only one advance payment. So this means that the managing authority will include in the first payment application the amount up to 30% of the program resources committed in the funding agreement and also paid to the financial instrument. The fund manager will have a certain level of liquidity to start the implementation. And afterwards, for each euro incurred as eligible expenditure, member state will be able to ask from the commission reimbursement with the next payment application. And of course, With each payment application, the managing authority has to submit an annex to the payment claim, which presents the amount of the advance that was paid into the fund. And this amount of the advance will have to be cleared no later than the final accounting year. And these rules are uh, set out in the article which speaks about specific elements for financial instruments in payment applications. This article and these rules regulate the payment applications between the member state and the commission and not the arrangements between the managing authority and the fund manager because these arrangements can be different and can be negotiated and agreed in the funding agreement. And the procedure is different for the case that the managing authority implements a loan or guarantee financial instruments directly? Yes, indeed. In the situation where the managing authority implements financial instruments themselves, as you said, loans and guarantees, in those situations, the expenditure can be claimed to the commission as soon as they are incurred. This is the same situation as we have in the current uh, programming period. Now let us turn to publicity requirements related to shared management financial instruments. Oh, Anna, I think that the new approach is very much policy-driven for the European Commission. Correct, Anna. Yes, the publicity requirements are of utmost importance for the European Commission. The importance for the Commission of these requirements can be seen in the last paragraph of this article on responsibilities of beneficiaries where it is envisaged that the managing authority has to apply measures up to cancelling 3% of the support from the funds to the operation concerned if these requirements are not respected. As the Commission, we hope that this paragraph will be never used, as we think that all citizens attached to the EU understood how important communication and publicity are to fight disinformation and manipulation against EU. So, in order to ensure EU support is visible to all stakeholders, what are the requirements for financial instruments under the new CPR? The requirements for financial instruments under the new CPR are defined in the article on responsibilities of beneficiaries. The paragraphs A and B of this article apply to the bodies implementing financial instruments 
and they are in line with what it is required also under the current regulation. The novelty stands in paragraph C of this article, as this paragraph C does not apply to the bodies implementing financial instruments, mm -hmm. but those bodies should ensure that the final recipients fulfilling the conditions of this article respect these obligations. It means that an SME which uses a loan supported by ERDF for an investment which exceeds 500,000 euros has to put a durable plaque or billboard clearly visible to the public, presenting the emblem of the union close to those investments when there is a physical implementation. Paragraph D also applies to the bodies implementing financial instruments and also paragraph E when the financial instrument operation is above 10 million euros. This is indeed a great way to enhance visibility to the public that EU resources are being used for projects. And let's move on to reporting. Yeva, what are the new rules on reporting? Information about the progress of implementation of financial instruments is uh, important not only to the managing authority, but also to the Commission. Therefore, reporting and monitoring is an important aspect of implementation so that the data that the managing authority reports to the Commission gives us a lot of information about how the money is spent, how fast it is spent, and in which policy objectives it is spent. To make this reporting process easier from the point of view of the managing authority, so for the future regulation, we wanted to simplify these reporting requirements, which are defined in the article speaking about transmission of data to the Commission, and the article envisages a joint transmission of data both for grants and financial instruments. So the purpose of this article is more frequent and more accurate data, and it also sets a more streamlined collection of data for all forms of support, including on financial instruments. In practice, it means that we ask the managing authority to report more frequently, but we ask for less data in terms of quantity. We no longer ask to report the same data in different reporting uh, modules. And um, from this point of view, we expect this exercise will result in uh, more accurate and more uh, reliable data when we aggregate them to present our policy is performing. In terms of um, deadlines, the information both for grants and financial instruments have to be submitted five times a year. So we try to ensure and to get closer to this reporting of real-time data, then the managing authorities have to report on the indicators. These have to be reported twice a year. And uh, then for the financial instruments, because there are certain characteristics which are only valid for financial instruments, we ask for a few specific data requirements. How much was invested by different types of products? How much was paid in management costs and fees? We would like also to know how much other public or private resources have been attracted by our funds. And we also would like to know, are there any resources returned that the investments have generated? All in all, we think that all this new approach to reporting will help with data quality, but also will require less work from the managing authority. So, if I understand correctly, more frequent reports, but less data and better data quality. And regarding auditing of financial instruments, what are the new rules and where in the CPR can our listeners find them? The audit was really, really simplified for financial instruments in the new programming period. Mm -hmm. This comes first from the overall simplification for audit, also for grants, as the management verifications and audits will be risk-based for the future. In addition, there is a specific article on audits of financial instruments. And there you can find some even more simplifications. It is clearly written that there cannot be any on-the-spot management and verifications at the level of final recipients, as it is the case in this programming period. There is also a very important simplification 
related to the reliance on the controls which are already done by external bodies and this reliance can be for the managing authorities in the scope of the management verifications and also for the audit authorities. Finally, we have already covered a lot of topics related to the new CPR in this podcast series, but there might be a few novelties that haven't yet been featured. Oana, Yeva, are there any other provisions that you would like to highlight to our listeners? Yes, Anna, I would like just to uh, say very shortly to our listeners that the provisions regarding the reuse of resources didn't change for the future. So during the eligibility period, these resources paid back can be used for the same purpose of the initial resources. It means for investments, management cost and fees, and in addition to cover the negative interest. After the end of the eligibility period, We have the same rules that during eight years after the end, these resources shall be used in accordance with the policy objectives of the programs under which they were set up in the form of financial instruments or grants. Another provision I would like to highlight is the one about differentiated treatment of investors. Our listeners will be familiar with the concept. I would like uh, just to reiterate What is important in relation to this article is to remember that the level of differentiated treatment should not exceed what is necessary to create the incentives for attracting private resources. So we shouldn't provide incentives where private investors would participate anyway or where the risk of the project is quite low because of the participation of the public resources. This level of incentive will be determined either during the process of selecting the fund managers in a competitive process or through an independent assessment and never an assessment provided by the body which benefits from this differentiated treatment. In case you, our listeners, would like to find out more on the new CPR, we encourage you also to watch the video presentation by Oana and Yeva, which was recorded at our online conference in December 2020. And we will link this video in the episode description. Oana, in case of any further regulatory questions, should the listeners contact their geographic units at DigiRegio? Yes, Anna, we encourage our listeners to contact their national contact points and the questions will arrive very quickly to us and we'll do our best to reply as quickly as possible. Many thanks, Oana and Yeva, for your valuable insights throughout the series. Thank you very much and thank you very much to all our listeners. I would also like to thank our listeners for paying attention and uh, their interest in the new rules for the future implementation of financial instruments. Thank you very much. And a big thank you also to our listeners for tuning in to this episode of the Phi Compass Calling the Tune podcast. If you would like to share with us your feedback on this and perhaps also proposals for interesting podcast topics for the future, please drop us a line at info at phicompass.eu. Do not forget to follow us on social media and look out for a new Phi Compass podcast soon. Have a lovely day, everyone.